Hi, good day. I wanted to talk to you today about an interesting phone call I received from a potential patient. And the lady had multiple sclerosis. One of the first things she told me was she was trying to fi follow Dr. Terry Wall's recommendations for how to deal with multiple sclerosis and recommended that I purchase this book, which I, I did do. And that is the purpose of what I want to talk to you today about using functional electrical stimulation and nutrition with uh, patients that have multiple sclerosis. Basically, what this book was about is, is a tremendous amount of nutrition information. Now, one of the reasons that you need nutritional supplements or be careful of what you're eating is because anytime you're doing functional stimulation or what is commonly referred to as muscle stimulation, you start requiring more nutrients, more hydration for your body. As an example, on our website, you can type in Gion, G-I-O-N, Dr. Giovanni De Domenico. And Gion, years ago, I was talking with him about a patient that was on nutritional support systems, terrible situation. And they wanted to try functional electrical stem with this child in order to help them get better. Well, the problem we ran into, and Dr. Giovanni was the one that was telling me, he says, Bob, the problem we've got is once you start pumping muscles, then the issue you have is you're requiring more nutrients. You're literally exercising, and especially if you're doing it volitionally, which simply means you decide you want to move. And even if you're incapable of moving, directing signals from your brain to your muscles, your muscles still move because of the use of functional electrical stimulation. So he said, just be careful when you're doing that with any person that's on nutritional supplements just to exist because the mere exercising requires additional nutrition. So always pay attention to that. This is what I thought Dr. Walls did an extremely great job on, was explaining the nutritional components as well as telling you ways to change your nutritional requirements. What I wanted to do though, was right now further expand upon what this book is about and what some of the information is about the use of functional electrical stimulation. First off is when this started, when Dr. Wall started, she immediate, she immediate diagnosis was relapsing or remitting multiple sclerosis, and then it later went down to what is called secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. Now remember, multiple sclerosis is one of these diseases that we call autoimmune disease. It is very similar to Alzheimer's, I mean, the processes are similar, as well as dementia. One of the issues you have in example, this multiple sclerosis, was Dr. Walls was basically, at the point she started the nutritional and the functional electrical stem, she was incapable of walking, standing, and when you see the book, you will see the situation she was in. And at that point, she intervened trying to change things. Well, one of the processes that is discussed is functional electrical stem. And what I want to point out to those of you that are watching, to give you a glimpse of hope in some of these diseases, is I will compare functional electrical stem where it is normally used, which is following a stroke, so that you can make the gaps, the connections as to what we're doing. First off, is before a person has a stroke, if you wanted to close your hand and pick up this basil, you know how to do it. Your brain is able to communicate electrically how to stimulate, move, motion to achieve this result. Following a stroke, many times there has been a death of cells between the brain, which forms the idea to pick up the basal, and the action itself of picking up the basal. Now, when we do functional electrical stem, what we're really doing is absent the brain, we can stimulate motor nerves to achieve this result. That's function. After the stroke, the thought process is still there to try to do this, but the pathway has been interrupted generally by some form of cell death. So when we start functional electrical stem, it's not merely sufficient to stimulate here, 
we have to also stimulate so that we ask the patient to try to achieve. All we're doing is this is a function, this is a thought process. When we're able to take the thought process and couple it up with the actual function, we start bridging the gap between the brain wanting to move and the actual movement. Remember, somewhere between point A and point B, there has been cell death. The brain is capable of relearning a new pathway to achieve these functions or regeneration. We have brain stem cells that are producing additional axons, dendrites, and myelin to go over the nerves so that we can possibly, with the use of functional stem and the volitional movement of the brain, relearn how to do things. Autoimmune diseases such as multiple sclerosis involve the deterioration of the covering or myelin around a nerve. Let me give you a practical example, and it may not be totally analogous, but I want to show you an example of what goes on in our physical world. As you walk up here, as I walk up here, here's a light switch. I'm simply going to turn the light switch off. When I do that, now I come back and I'm going to turn the light switch on and watch how fast electricity comes, goes to the tube, fluorescent bulb, and we have what we were trying to achieve, which was light. In our body, the myelin sheaths that are around the nerves, there is similarity between the wire. When we turn that switch, we let electrons leave and they go to a target. That's the light. If we have a covering, a plastic rubber type covering around the wire, then we are capable of taking those electrons, which will achieve the function, and in so doing that, turn the light bulb on. If that covering around the wire is broken, or if there is no covering, then the issue we run into is anything else between that switch and that light. There's interference. The electrons do not get to the point they need to go to initiate the function of light. That is very similar to autoimmune diseases where you have deterioration of the myelin. Remember, we have over 5 billion brain cells. They communicate with axons and dendrites. One of the things that happens is in that type of compactness, when you have breaks in myelin, the electrical signal is getting interrupted. If you interrupt it from the brain down to the where you're trying to achieve the function, similar to the light switch to the light, you cannot accomplish the task. So that's where we get into functional electrical stem coupled with volitional intention to achieve a result. That's where this comes together, and that's where there's promise in multiple sclerosis and some other autoimmune diseases when you couple them with functional electrical stimulation. Now, I'm not trying to tell you this is rock-hard science. It isn't. This is still an area in which we're, de we're dealing with diseases in which there's very little promising prognosis. We typically use medications and drugs in an experimental basis, hoping, can we cure it? Rarely ever has that ever happened. Can we slow down the progression or can we restore the patient to a functional being where they can enjoy living and can enjoy the processes of life? That's what we're trying to do with functional electrical stem. Now, that's what I wanted to introduce to you right now is the concept of myelin, how it acts as an insulator in our own body, similar to what we do physically in life when we're trying to move electrons from point A to point B. We use insulators to protect. Our body uses myelin to protect. That is one of the turning points that is happening in the treatment of multiple sclerosis. Now, I'm not going to tell you it's easy. It's not. You have to devote two to three months of serious functional electrical stimulation with the desire 
to get better and achieve that function and supplement it with nutrition. You have to pay attention. The body cannot heal if you do not input the necessary nutrients that are capable of self-healing. That's what this is about, and that's why later on you will see as we advance other ways to use functional electrical stem to achieve beneficial results. Thanks for watching the video.